Here in studio is the former mayor of Chesterfield. He left that job to become president and CEO of Metro Transit, John Nations, in studio. John, thanks for joining us here on KTRS. Thank you very much. I'm delighted to be with you. We uh, don't get enough time to talk about public transportation and the future and where it's going. But first, let's start with the past, because we don't know where we're going unless we realize where we've been. Um, You've been there how long now? Uh, three and a half years. And how long has the light rail Metrolink been around? It's been 21 years this summer. 21 years. Right. We've heard a lot about when, where, why, how we got to where we got, why the tracks are where they are, and how it's funded. Give us a quick sense of how we got to 2014. Well, yeah, it, uh, the history is really important because a lot of people, as I say, we're one of the best known but probably least understood entities in the region. The name of our company is the Bi-State Development Agency, which a lot of longtime St. Louis people were recognized What's important to understand is several things that are important to understand about our company. We actually exist by virtue of an agreement between the states of Missouri and Illinois. We are known as an interstate compact agency. We were incorporated by an act of Congress in 1949, signed into law by President Truman. We have the original charter with his signature on it down at the office. Wow. We actually were not incorporated to be a transit company at all. We're actually incorporated to be a regional economic development agency to coordinate economic development uh, opportunities on both sides of the river. In the 1950s, it's kind of interesting to note, we did the work and the studies that led to the formation of the Metropolitan Sewer District. We did extensive work studying the Mississippi River and the ports and the capacities. The company that people now see, commonly known as Metro, but uh, officially known as the Bi-State Development Agency, began to take shape in the early 1960s when the region was coming to us to provide really comprehensive regional solutions to regional challenges. One was uh, St. Louis Downtown Airport, commonly known as Parks Airport. It had gone broke and closed by the early 1960s. The region came to us because it's the closest airport to downtown St. Louis. We bought it in 1962. We reopened it today. It is the third busiest airport in the state of Illinois, the closest one to downtown St. Louis. And uh, Illinois says it has a $584 million annual economic impact. I did not know that the by state and Metro owns parks? We own parks. Right. I didn't know that. And we have for 50 years. Then they came to us, interestingly enough, about the Gateway Arch. Gateway Arch was being constructed, very difficult project, unique. They'd never built one. They haven't built one since. <laughs> so one of the things they came to us to solve was how to finance a portion of the arch. In fact, what we did, uh, because of our bonding capacity, we financed the construction of the tram system in the Gateway Arch that takes you to the top. We are the only entity that has ever operated the Gateway Arch since it opened in the 1960s. In the 1980s, we constructed and we have Stop operated. for a second. You built. Do you also maintain currently? And yes. There's, so there's a line in, in the budget taking care of the tram in the arch every That's year. That's right. That's why we're so heavily involved in the arch project. We run the visitor center. We run the tram system. When you take a trip to the top of the Gateway Arch, you are buying a ticket on by state. We, they came to us in the 1980s. We constructed the garage on the north end of the arch grounds. We've operated it. We constructed it. We bonded it. We've operated it. Uh, now we've paid it off, frankly, so that's all paid off. It's but, also going away, too. That's right. As yeah. part of the arch project, the garage will be torn down sometime in the next year. And that is, by the way, that's worth talking about. The whole arch project is a great thing for St. Louis, but we can get to that. Uh, but the biggest challenge the region came to us to solve was in the early 1960s, St. Louis had a very fragmented and broken public transportation system. By the early 60s, there were 15 separate public transportation companies in St. Louis. Now, McGraw, they all had two things in common. They all provided public transportation, and what do you think the second one was? They were all going broke. Right. So the region calls us to solve the problem. On April the 1st, 1963, we borrowed about $22.5 million, bought 15 separate transit companies, and for the first time, consolidated it into one region-wide transportation system. Fifty years later, we, se we celebrated our 50th anniversary last year with regard to taking over the public transit system. And 50 years later, it is well known throughout the country and frankly around the world for the quality of the service and its efficiencies. Our efficiencies with regard to public transit, we got a tremendous team led by our chief, chief transit officer, Ray Frame. Our efficiencies lead the country. We have people flying here from around the country and, frankly, around the world. The latest call came from Russia in February. Come in, they want to come be, and examine. Be careful. Right. <laughs> well, exactly. But, we, you know, we get these calls because people research transit agencies online, and then they have these questions about how can you put that much service with those efficiencies on the street and on the rail for the dollars that are made available. 
Now, one of the things that's really important to understand, because I get questions all the time, you probably do too, given your position, why does Metrolink go here? Why doesn't it go there? You know, particularly with regard to the light rail. One of the things that's very difficult to explain about how we operate as a business and how the public transportation system is, is implemented and how it's funded, we are not a taxing authority. The sales taxes that are approved by the voters do not come directly to buy state. For instance, there are three sales taxes in St. Louis County. They go to the county. There are three sales taxes for transportation in the city. They go to the city. The three jurisdictions that we serve with regard to public transportation are St. Clair County, Illinois, the city of St. Louis, Missouri, and St. Louis County. What then happens is those jurisdictions have the money. We then go through an appropriation process, and we go in looking at their needs and their resources, and we put service packages together separately in those three jurisdictions, pricing out the service in terms of the hours that it takes to operate it, what it costs in each of the three modes, which is call a ride, the Metro bus, and the Metro Link light rail. We can price it all out per mode, miles, hours, what are the capital costs that the system requires, and then debt service that we have on the, on the capital projects that we've built. So what happens is, you know, we will go to St. Louis County, we meet with them all the time, and they'll say, we're running, this is the schedule of bus routes, these are the routes, this is the way the train operates, this is what it costs. You know, what are your priorities in the coming year? Would you like more? Would you like less? Uh, City of St. Louis is exactly the same way. St. Clair County is exactly the same way. So when it comes to putting the transit service on the street, frankly, we're just a big contractor. We serve the region. You do what the counties tell you to do, more or less. That's right. And they ask for our input. You know, what does the ridership show? Where is it coming from? How are we connecting people to jobs? What makes sense from a transit point of view? What concerns do they have in their individual community? And then, of course, what is the extent of their resources to operate something? So we put on the street what the what the jurisdictions are willing to purchase. Uh, St. Charles, right, doesn't doesn't um, um, give anything for the public transportation in the St. Louis metropolitan area. That's right. It's one of the it's one of the questions I am asked most often. How come you didn't put? Uh, how come MetroLink does not go to St. Charles? Very simple. St. Charles has never appropriated the money or asked us to run public transportation out to St. Charles County. So. We don't. We, we put it where people want to buy it uh, in those three jurisdictions, even though under our compact we have jurisdiction and can perform services in St. Charles County, in Jefferson County, Missouri, in Madison County, Illinois, as well as Monroe County, Illinois. It's really the three jurisdictions that we serve with our public transportation business, which is St. Clair County, Illinois, the city of St. Louis, Missouri, and then St. Louis County. And that's very hard because people will often say to me, well, John, you know, I see some buses – in, in any of those jurisdictions, you can pick one. And they don't appear to have as many riders on it as you would, you know, as they might. Right. And yet, you know, it's it's well documented now that we have overcra- overcrowding issues in certain areas of the city, particularly on the Grand Line and on the Kingstown. Why don't you take some of that service and put it somewhere else? And the answer is very simple. That's not something I can do. I can't take money from the voters in St. Louis County and say, okay, thanks for the money. I'm now going to put it in Illinois, or I'm going to take the Illinois money and put it in the city, or the city money and put it in the county. The jurisdictions pay for it. What is interesting to note is is we're kind of unique. We're probably the largest system in the country, uh, given the people we serve and the size of the system, for which there is no state support for public transportation. The voters and the taxpayers of St. Louis, St. Louis County, St. Louis City, and St. Clair County, Illinois, have made a tremendous commitment to public transportation. So when you put public transportation on the street in St. Louis, it's mainly paid for locally, and then we bring in about $50 million a year uh, in federal money, but most of that has to go to the capital side by the restrictions uh, uh, on the terms of the federal money. So how the system is put together is something that's very difficult for people to really understand as to why the service is the way that it is. You want a fair increase, or you're asking for a fair increase, or you're talking about a fair increase. Yeah, what happened is in 2010, uh, when we, when it was before I was there, but the, the agency adopted a long-range plan. And part of the long-range plan was rather than, you know, having a big fair increase and then waiting years and having another huge fair increase, it, it really made more sense. It says every two years we're going to review our fair structure, We're going to make proposed changes, and we're going to take it out to the public. It's important to remember, you know, when we're talking about a fair increase, people will often say, well, how is it going to affect people, and you're going to make people pay more for the ride. 
That's true. About 80% of the cost of the system, though, is paid for by the taxpayers. And we have to be responsible to the taxpayers. You know, whenever we get into a tax talk, people say, well, what are the people riding the system paying? When we do a fare increase, people say, well, you know, you ought to get more tax money. So, but we have to balance both of those things. But about 80% of the system is paid for by taxpayers. About 20% of it is actually paid for by the riders. And while it is true that when you pay more money for a ride on public transportation, it costs you more money, we understand that. It often hits some of our most vulnerable citizens, vulnerable economic. Because if you're taking mass transit, chances are you don't have that Lamborghini in the driveway. That, that could very well be true. But at the same time, the people who ride the system need to pay something of the cost in order so that we continue to have it. You want to stick around to another segment? I'd be glad to. John Nations, our guest. He's president and CEO of uh, Metro, and we're talking to uh, him, maybe a phone call uh, or two, uh, 922 here on the Big 550 KT.